Hi, this is Niranjan here and in this video we are going to speak about intentional replantation in endodontics. Why is it done? How is it done? What instruments are needed? What precautions should be followed? All of this would be covered in this video. Let's get into it. Procedure of intentional replantation is not new. It has been uh, discussed in our old textbook that is with Grossman and Wien also. Now the indications for the same that is for the intentional replantation has been well documented by an article uh, which has been written by Pierre et al. They clearly say whenever we have a case of a failed root canal or maybe there are anatomic limitations, maybe there are accessibility limitations patient management, persistent chronic pain or maybe patient is objecting to a pipal surgery or maybe Christmas cases. So these are few indications or few reasons where uh, uh, where an intentional re-implantation re can be done for a particular case. Now if I were to weigh the benefits of, uh, of an intentional replantation re to a pipal surgery then definitely for me intentional replantation re weighs more. Uh, there are few reasons for the same. First and, first and foremost by doing an intentional replantation I have best of both the worlds. That is I have best from my uh, re-treatment procedures and I have best from my apical surgery. Second important point is that uh, when it comes to apical surgery there are a lot of factors and a lot of parameters uh, that I need to keep into consideration while doing a surgery. That means I have the anatomical structures that I need to keep in mind then uh, there is a lot of bone reduction due to which there can be post-operative pain, swelling etc and uh, it can uh, for example uh, to take a case of an apical surgery of a maxillary molar I have a risk that I might accidentally perforate the maxillary sinus though it can be definitely managed by uh, doing additive procedures but why honestly invest in such a hassle and why not make things more more simple. Coming to the last major advantage is which uh, definitely lures me is also is the economic part. As it has been properly documented in, in literature by an excellent article by uh, Dr. Anshul uh, who is from Connecticut and he rightly weighs the economic part of an uh, intentional replantation versus an implant or maybe an apical surgery. So if you see the we can definitely bring down the cost to quite an extent and on the same time we can preserve the most natural implant in the world that is the patient's own tooth. Like it is it is always said that the best implant that the patient can have is his own natural tooth. So why not invest in a more economic way and in a more predictable manner. Coming to the next part of the intentional replantation and the question that we need to ask ourselves is that when should I not perform an intentional replantation. So the first, uh, first contraindication that I would like to highlight here is if I have a case where the orthograde uh, orthograde root canal treatment or the earlier root canal treatment that has been done for that particular case is not proper. That means I have a faulty crown or maybe I have a leaking restoration which can be an additive cause of bacteria and can eventually uh, lead to failure of my intentional replantation case. So if these kind of scenarios uh, you come across it is definitely necessary that you correct them first rather than going into intentional replantation case. Uh, by doing such kind of uh, uh, treatment procedures there is also a possibility that the lesion might definitely heal and eventually you may not need intentional replantation later. There are few instances but uh, however where the patient can't come back or, or there is limitation of time and you need to finish off everything in a, in a limited span of time. So in such cases then what I would do is always do the orthograde retreatment first and since I have no option of placing some kind of medicament for some period of time I would perform the intentional replantation in the same appointment. 
Coming to the second contraindication is uh, when I can't do an intentional replantation is when I have a dilacerated tooth. So when it comes to dilacerated or curved canals, uh, it is always uh, an issue because when we are trying to extract the tooth, there is a chance that the root fragment might stay inside. Well, on a lighter note, I would say that God has done the intentional replantation for you. Uh, okay, jokes apart, uh, yeah. Uh, Another anatomy complexity that, that might come before me is the maxillary molars. Now the maxillary molars when we have uh, three separation of the roots that is all the three roots are not fused and extracting such kind of maxillary molar can be a bit difficult and even if I extract that tooth en masse or in single piece re-implanting the tooth again back in the socket can again be a headache. So such kind of cases when it comes to maxillary molars I would think twice when doing an intentional replantation case, especially when the roots are not fused. Also coming to another contraindication is that when the patient has some kind of multi-unit processes that has been placed uh, in the mouth. So when I am trying to do intentional replantation, there is a chance that the, uh, that the processes might also come off. So in such cases, you should definitely be careful and if you are possible, if, if it is possible, you can remove the processes in one piece without damaging the ceramic or uh, any part of the processes, then definitely intentional replantation can be an alternative. But when it comes to such kind of cases, my first indication is never intentional re replantation. Or maybe coming to the last point where the tooth has uh, some, some kind of per periodontal condition where it is periodontally compromised and such kind of cases are not indicated for intentional replantation. Now coming to the actual uh, procedure per se, now all the protocols that we are following for a surgical extraction of a normal tooth, the same protocols have to be followed in this case. So first and foremost, uh, pre-medication with, uh, with antibiotics is necessary for the patient. Also, it is necessary that we take proper medical history for the patient, especially if he is on blood thinners, etc. Because you don't want any bleeding to happen. Moving on to the uh, actual procedure per se, now it is necessary that whatever materials are needed for the procedure, all of them have to be uh, collected and they all have to be kept ready before the procedure. Because when it comes to intentional replantation, the extra oral time matters a lot and it has to be kept as minimal as we can. Now coming to the uh, actual uh, coming to the actual procedure, an atraumatic extraction is very very necessary. So so when it comes to extraction, it uh, the elevators are to be avoided as as far as possible. Whatever extraction is to be there, it has to be happen in only with my extracting forceps. Take ample amount of time for extraction of the tooth. Never hurry up. And be in a hurry that you want to uh, make a lot of rotatory movements to pluck out the tooth as fast as possible. Because practically the, the resection of root and retrofilling does not take more than 10 minutes. So for me, my major time of the entire procedure is practically spent for extraction of my tooth. Now once the tooth has been extracted, now it is necessary that uh, our, we keep our timer on and it should be as less as possible. So the extra oral time should be as minimal as possible. So first and foremost, uh, once the tooth has been extracted, do not curate the extraction socket. It is very much necessary because uh, whatever pedial cells are remaining viable in the extraction socket on the periphery of the bone, they are needed for reattachment of my tooth. So even if there is some kind of draining pus or there is some kind of granulation, please do not cure it. Very, because uh, doing a curettage in such a case is going to decrease your prognosis of the tooth. Now coming to the uh, tooth that has been extracted, there are a few uh, pedial cells or tissues that can be seen on the root surface. Never degrad, never remove them. Again, they are necessary for my reattachment of the tooth. Now, whatever granulation tissue is present at the periphery of the tooth, that has to, so 
anyways we are resetting 2 to 3 millimeters of the apical third so when i am trying to reset this apical third the granulation tissue also shears off and it comes on suppose some part of the granulation tissue is still touching uh, some part of the root surface then that can be carefully plucked out with a tweezer another important aspect is that where i am holding my tooth now it is necessary that i hold the tooth in a saline soaked gauze and not keep it dry on the hand now once the apical third has been resected next step is to do a retro cavity with my ultrasonic tips now the retro cavity should have a sufficient amount of dent to facilitate MTA packing once the retro cavity has been prepared with our ultrasonic tips the next step is to pack MTA inside the retro cavity once MTA has been packed the MTA has to be flushed with the entire root surface do not in instrument the PDL tissues or any kind of tissue that you definitely see now each time it is necessary that we keep the tooth wet now the best solution to keep the tooth wet is the HBSS if that is not available then you can definitely use saline okay once the MD has been packed into the in the into the retro cavity the next step is to reimplant the tooth back into the socket now once the tooth has been reimplanted into the socket there are practically two options whether i should be splinting the tooth or whether i should not be splinting the tooth now literature and research says that it is not necessary to splint the tooth so once i have reimplanted the tooth into the socket i ask the patient to chew on a wet gauze for 10 to 15 minutes for the initial healing to happen now suppose I would be splinting a particular case for some or the other reason literature again says that the splinting should not be done for more than two weeks because excessive splinting time is has a direct impact on the resorption of the tooth so it is necessary that we remove the splint as early as possible my recommendation would be remove the splint within one week okay when it comes to maxillary teeth it is uh, my it is my personal choice that I definitely do splint because of the gravity playing a certain role into it. But when it comes to mandibular teeth, I have not splinted any of my mandibular teeth. Moving on to the next part, that is once we uh, once the tooth is back into the socket, it is necessary that we give the patient proper post-operative instruction. That is not to eat anything hot, hard and spicy not to uh, do any kind of hot fermentation mild swelling is definitely expected and pain is definitely expected for maybe another next three to four days which would be taken with medicines now suppose you have splinted the tooth and uh, after one week the time comes to remove the splint it is necessary that we we remove all kind of splintage that is there or any kind of reinforcement and let the tooth move freely it takes some time or it takes some while probably three to four weeks for the tooth to gain the the attachment or the grip that it had earlier so maybe any kind of indirect processes that we are going to place maybe it, it is a crown maybe it is an only etc all of it has to be postponed or suspended for at least four weeks yes a temporary crown and only can definitely be given but the final impression should be taken only after four weeks so finally coming to the conclusion and uh, to answer most of the common questions that are asked and first and foremost is what is the success rate as it is mentioned by Tora Bena Jaya et al in, uh, in 2017 that the success rate for the same is almost 89.1 percent yes that, that that much high success rate so I would say yes this is is a procedure that has to be now coming to the uh, complications associated with it external root resorption or maybe ankylosis there is one thing that I would like to highlight from my end and is it necessary to think that each and every piece is, is going to complicate because when we are doing some kind of orthograde treatment for a, a fresh fresh uh, tooth which which has turned necrotic do we think that my case is going to fail and i'm going to need an apical surgery 
So why think in such a negative manner? Mm. So if when it comes to intentional replantation, what factors are there in my hand that is to proper uh, that is to follow the proper protocols to keep the extraordinary time as lesser as possible to the setting of the route? All of these necessary protocols are to be followed. What the case is going to turn out to it later, I don't know. Those are the factors which is not in my hand and not in patient's hand. But doing proper treatment and following proper protocol is something which is in my hand. And this is what I believe in. And lastly, when uh, do I follow intentional replantation in each and every case? No, this is not an answer. So intentional replantation is not an answer to each and every case. There are even instances right now where I still do periapical surgery for few of my Cases, but those indications we have already discussed earlier. But yes, if if I were to say, uh, if I were to differentiate the uh, percentage of uh, the treatment done with intentional replantation versus apical surgery, then definitely intentional replantation uh, weighs high because of the technique sensitivity in this particular case. So the technique sensitivity is less, the complications are less, it is more predictable, and in both the procedure that is the intentional uh, replantation and the periapical surgery we are practically removing the root apical third so how easily i do it or how easily you do it it is up to you and i leave it up to you so signing off friends i am dr niranjan watkar i am a practicing micro endodontist and a micro restorative dentist from india and uh, do subscribe to my channel uh, so that you get latest update on my video and please don't forget to hit the bell icon thank you see you in the next video